Do this just yet. You will know pain. Damage of the build is a ten out of ten. Defense is a nine out of ten. And clear speed is a ten out of ten for Sanctum and about eight out of ten everywhere else. So how the build works. The Rallakesh boots give you max charges while stationary. However, you then put a gem inside that you can't use due to attribute requirements, so they become red. Then, due to the way the game checks your gear whenever you weapon swap, the boots are functional for like one server tick or something or a split second, and then your charges will get set to max. Then, they're not functional because they're red, except for that one server tick. So then you will still have the charges and you're able to move around and not use them as you can see. Then you discharge and you lose them because that's what discharge does. Then you weapon swap again and you get the charges back. Note, you cannot have any while moving effects on your character or it will break this interaction. This includes things such as bleeding or the Rallakesh Pantheon, pretty much anything that has to do with you moving other than like literally movement speed. Um, so this build is especially good at Sanctum and boss rushing, but it can do everything in the game. And I do mean everything. I can't think of a thing this build couldn't do. The build is especially good at Sanctum and boss rushing, but it can also do everything in the game. Pros the build, it has huge damage. You get lots of movement speed. You get screen wide boom booms. It cures baldness. The base version of the build is cheap and can't really get too expensive because the items that are required are fairly common and it is also all content viable. Cons. It is a two button build. High end expensive, high end upgrades are very expensive and not really SSF viable. And last con would be waiting for discharge cooldown if that is something that will bother you. So the build stacks power charges to gain most of its damage. From Badge of the Brotherhood, the build gets Frenzy Charges are equal to Power Charges. And from Masterful Form on Slayer, our Endurance Charges are equal to our Frenzy Charges. This gives us all our charges are equal to each other based on our Power Charges, so we stack the Power Charges. Likewise, most of the defense of the build is from the Endurance Charges. This gives the build a ton of Fizz Reduction, and it synergizes amazingly with Mortal Call, giving it huge duration and reduced damage effect. Because each Endurance charge buffs Immortal Call. So the way you play the build is really simple. You weapon swap, discharge, and then just repeat that over and over. So every time you discharge, you will have to weapon swap. Um, you can change the weapon swap keybind, which is what I did. I changed it to R off of whatever the default is. And I find that helps a lot with making it feel better. Sources of power charges would be plus one from Void Battery, plus two from Malachi's Loop, plus one from Anoint, plus one from each ring, plus two from your tree, plus one from Helmet, although you can 
corrupt it for having a uh, power charge on the implicit. Uh, so your helmet could give you plus two. That would be kind of hard to get though. And then plus one from honored, honored Tattoo of the Storm, bringing you up to a total of 14 with the corrupted helmet and 13 without. So the core items of the build. Rallet catch and patience boots. This is the only reason this build works. Already explained it. Void battery. Gives you power charge, cast speed, crit chance, and a bunch of spell damage per power charge. Malachi's loop is basically the same as void battery except the shield. It gives two charges and also a bunch of spell damage per power charge. Warlord helmet, plus one charges, plus two if it's corrupted for it. Replica Restless Ward gives lots of move speed for making up our boots are red, so they're not giving us move speed, so this helps a lot with that. Also gives a ton of regen, and the minus charges on the build on the chest piece does not affect the build. Um, if Replica Restless Ward gets too expensive, you can use the regular one, it's just a little bit worse. And that one will definitely never be expensive. I might even recommend in Softcore foregoing the replica one if you're on a budget, and then getting a good double corrupt on a regular one. Badge of the Brotherhood makes frenzy charges equal to power charges. A rare ring with plus one power charge implicit. If you can't afford this, because this will be expensive, and I didn't use it for a while and the build still was good, you can replace this with a spell damage per power charge, ring implicit, or just a random rare ring with crit multi. Um, on your belt, you're gonna want a rare belt with cooldown recovery. Mine is just crafted from the bench because it's 12%. Um, I think you can get up to 20% with Shaper or Crusader influence. Timeless Jewel is a militant faith with high Templar Dominus. This makes a keystone give you 3% more spell damage per power charge. And obviously this is gonna give you a lot of spell damage. It's not increased, it is more, so it's huge. Um, the the mods that give you stuff per devotion on the uh, Timeless Jewel, you have a lot of options. Just get whatever really looks good. Getting elemental resistance is good. Uh, damage really uh, can't go too wrong with anything. Uh, Warrior's Tail is 100% effect of tattoos in the radius. So you put this next to your cooldown tattoos, which will give you an extra 16% cooldown reduction. Why Slayer? Mainly you go Slayer because of Masterful Forms, which will set your Endurance Charges equal to Frenzy Charges. This gives you a lot of survivability with 13 Endurance Charges. Slayer also gives 20% more damage from Bane of Legends, 20% Cull, and 10% move speed from Headsman, and of course, you have the Persistent Leech even when your HP is full from Brutal Fervor. Why not Assassin? I don't like squishy builds when you can play a version such as this that still will do 50 million DPS and also not die to a T2 map boss if it hits you first. So you will level this build as anything you want. You cannot level it as this because you need the boots and they're at level 60. You can swap right as soon as you can equip the boots. I did and I have this one-shotted Tava. Then after you're done leveling to 60, you will do complete respec to the discharge tree. Tattoos that are good for the build. Katava Revel to avoid bleeding. You do need to avoid 100% of bleed. If you bleed, the build will brick. Two Atara for more attributes. Sky for 3% all Ellie res. Tesalio Tide Shifter, avoid stun. Oak for more life. Ramago Shaman gives suppression. Tesalio Makanga, for 8% cooldown. Pantheons you'll use is Brian King, mainly for the freeze immunity, and Garu Khan for the shock immunity. You will kill all bandits on this build, and the map mods to avoid are Ellie Reflect, Cannot Regen, Cannot Leech, and Less Cooldown Recovery.